I don't agree with that, or then I think it was funny either. Not, 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 not laughing at those kind of humors. Proverbs 11 and verse 22. Proverbs 11 and verse 22. Proverbs 11 and verse 22, please. Turn there in your Bible or in your electronic device. Whatever the case may be. I really wish I hope I could get Christians to just go back and read from their Bibles. Or if nothing else, I mean, electronic devices you can turn off so you can just read your Bible when you read your Bible. That's a very precious time to have time with God in His Word. So just, just be real careful with you, so. Hey, ladies, look at me. <clears throat> I have the ultimate of respect for young women and women in fundamental Baptist churches. It seems like expectations in some ways are put more on you than on the men. Now, I want to be honest with you and say that that's not true. The perception is that. And when I hear, sometimes I hear a woman say, well, it's just because you're, you're repressive religion and, you know, you treat women, you subjugate women, and da 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 First of all, Bible preaching churches only teach you what the Bible tells you to do. You got issues with that, you got issues with God. Now, but I, I have the ultimate of respect for young ladies and women in fundamental Baptist churches who have a desire to embrace and do what the Bible tells them. Because I realize it puts expectations on you. There are things you are going to be asked to do or not do that are going to, going to make you stand out a little bit more than others. And I don't think most women don't want to stand out in front of anybody. I had my wife stand up. She'll later on, she'll say, I don't do that. I don't like that. She likes to be in the background. She doesn't want to be in the forefront. First of all, she's, since this is trophy hunting, she's my trophy wife. She is. She's my favorite wife, too, by the way, but she's my favorite wife. <laughs> so you got more than one? Nope, but she's the favorite. There's no question about that. I, I admire and respect you tremendously. That's why I, I want to take a few moments this morning. When you go to this verse, you're going to think, you just back up on it. Proverbs 11, verse 22. Proverbs 11, 22. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. Do you know anything about pigs? Pigs use their nose for everything, not just to smell. They root things out. They push the food around with it. They use their nose for everything. So a pig's nose is usually pretty wet, slimy, dirty, filthy. If you were to take a jewel of gold, a beautiful jewel of some kind, in a setting of gold and put it in a pig's nose. It would have to do absolutely nothing for that pig and no one would really notice it much because he'd still run his nose through the stuff. As a jewel of gold in a swine snout, it says, so is a fair woman. Fair doesn't mean she doesn't cheat. Fair means she's beautiful. So is a fair woman, a beautiful woman who has no discretion. Now let me tell you what discretion means. It means to have a proper taste. You, you know what you do when you go to the refrigerator and you open something and it's leftovers? And you want to know if it's any good or not? If you're smart, you call your little brother. Taste that. <laughs> if he doesn't drop dead, you'll eat it. But if you, ever, you know, our taste, our sense of taste helps us a lot with whether or not something's good or bad or right or wrong. So the sense of taste of discretion is talking about a proper kind of judgment or discernment. An ability to discern and judge things in your life. You can be the most beautiful woman in the world, ladies. If you do not have good discretion, it's like putting a jewel of gold in a swine snout. I wish we would get people to quit following people in, in entertainment in Hollywood. I used to park cars when I lived in Southern California. I used to park cars for a company that um, uh, parked cars at restaurants and conventions, businesses, and things like that. But they didn't charge for their parking service. They made all their money off of tips. 
So they only parked cars in places that were very high end. I'm 16 years old and I'm driving Lamborghinis and Maseratis and Rolls Royces and I mean very high end multi-millionaire kind of people because they tip well. I've seen movie stars come in these places. Now, I'll tell you who they were, but you don't know who they are because this is 40, this is 50 years ago. <laughs> Boy, they look different without makeup. <laughs> Some of them you wouldn't recognize. When I was in the service, I was a single guy. And we went to our first, I went to our, my technical school for training. Right out of boot camp, you go to a technical school usually for a training time. And I was going to be an air traffic controller. Not the guy in the tower, but down the radar room working airplanes and stuff. So you have to go to school about 16, 18 weeks. We're sitting in the class, first day of class. Myself, a bunch of guys, and about eight or ten girls in the Air Force, the military. And usually women in the military, not usually. Women in the military look like linebackers for the Packers, okay? But my buddy Sweet and I were sitting there together. We look across the room, and there's this girl, and she was very pretty. And I was a single guy, so remember that. I said, sweet, sweet, look over there. She's in our class, 16 weeks we're going to be in class with this girl. I said, this is going to be good now, because we're going to get to know this girl. He goes, yeah. Well, then the instructor went around the classroom, and he said, okay, I want you to stand up now, first day of class. I want you to stand up, tell me where you're from, and why did you join the Air Force? So they went around each person, and so on, so on, so on, so They get to the girl, I go, watch this, sweet, watch this, watch this. She stands up, she goes, hi, my name is... Martha, or whatever, I forgot what it was. My name is Martha, and I joined the Air Force, which is four year commitment. I joined the Air Force so I could get a field jacket. I turned to Sweet and I go, She's yours. <laughs> oh, boom. That good looking woman got up really fast. I thought, You gave away four years of your life to get a jacket, you can go in the Army Navy store for 10 bucks and buy one. It's like, <laughs> So is a fair woman which is without discretion. Ladies, Mary, the mother of Jesus, what does she look like? Was she pretty? Tall, short. What did Mary look like? Now you ask Catholics, don't talk about those pictures that you saw now, I'm not talking about that. I mean, what, what did the Bible say Mary looked like? Do we have any idea? Oh, oh, Jezebel. What did she look like? I know she went up in the tower hiding from Jehu and Bob said she painted her face and tired of her hair. I always think of a big old tire on top of her head when I say that. I heard a preacher, remember Jezebel, tired, painted her face, tired of her hair, and they threw her down, the horses stomped on her. I heard a preacher preach a sermon one time on Jezebel and that passage, and his sermon was entitled, When Spot Ate the Avon Lady. <laughs> Can you believe that? Anyway, okay. Do we know? Martha. What did Eve look like? See, ladies, so is a fair woman who has no discretion, no judgment, no discernment. She's not able to look at, she's not able to take and measure things correctly and understand what she needs to understand, where discretion is the idea of understanding in it also. Discretion about what? Well, first of all, about herself. The self-image thing is bigger with ladies than it is with guys. And don't think guys don't care about their self-image because they do. But it's bigger with ladies. Some ladies are crippled by their self-image. Here's why. Because you get your self-image from the world instead of from the Bible. Well, the Bible doesn't tell me how to feel about it. Yeah, it does. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. But women will spend all this time trying to imitate, emulate some other woman and not understand. I, I, I have no problem, and let me just say a word about the makeup issue. I have no problem with women wear makeup. Now, if your parents do, your pastor said, you go with what they tell you, just disregard what I'm about to say this. But I don't think you ought to look totally different when you're made up. Okay, I'm going to use another expression. If the bar needs paint, and paint it. I mean, whatever the case may be. That's it. That's it. But the truth of the issue is, I don't understand this thing. Where, where ladies are, they're crippled by their self-image. They're so self-conscious about everything. 
and everything about them and everything that they do and everything that they, they say and everything that they, 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 they wear and every place that they go and everything about their life, they have no real joy because their, their nose is too big. But God made you. Now don't get mad at God, but God made you. Somewhere along the way, I, I really do think this is an area where guys could to help women not, to not be so subconscious about things. Now, I appreciate ladies who want to take care of themselves and, you know, do what they can with what God gives them. That's fine. But the idea of self-image from the world is you got to be pencil, thin, skinny, with your elbows sticking out you so stinking skinny, turn sideways, stick your tongue out, you look like a zipper, for goodness sakes. Because you're not happy because you can't wear a size two. Two! That's what we're buying our grandchildren to wear. Twos! Two teeth. Where do you want to be? A zero? Where do you go from zero? Minus one? I mean, ladies, please. The, the, whole, the whole thing about life is messed up because you get the world's view. Or you have your own view of what you are. Well, here's what I think I am. Well, thank you, Hillary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go on and be one of those kind of women. Oh, God, save me. The truth of the matter is, you get your view from the Bible. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us a certain way for a certain reason because every person is an individual creative work of God. At conception, your gender was determined. You don't change that down the road. That, that's me and not God. Well, I think I'm a God. No, you're not. You're a girl. You were born a girl. You are a girl. At conception, you were made a girl. God chose your gender at conception. That's a miraculous, amazing work of the Almighty God to make you a woman. He made you a girl. He intended for you to be a girl. This Bruce Jenner dude. Now he's telling people he's sorry he made this decision and tried to try to now he wants to be, try to be a woman. Oops. No, I'm sorry. Now, if I can get on the side of the issues about race for a moment. You know, your, your, your race, your, your skin color, who you are, who you are, was determined at conception. Okay, I'm a white guy. Well, I'm a Cherokee Indian, but Cherokee white guy. See it? This whole thing about self-image, it's paralyzing to some people. And they spend their entire life, especially ladies, they spend their entire life trying to fulfill someone else's image of who they are. Yeah, you gotta take care of yourself and, and be appropriate and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that I've been blessed to have a beautiful wife. I don't understand all the bottles of things in the bathroom, <laughs> shower, everywhere. <laughs> I don't understand it all. They have, you ladies, you got this. You got this stuff. <laughs> you do. I, we go, it's time for bed. I go get in bed. She's got to get ready. I'm ready. Seriously. I lay down right there on the floor right now and go to sleep. I'm ready. No, no. And I understand all the, the beauty care product things and stuff and things. And, let me change the subject. The truth of the matter is, this self-image thing is paralyzing. Because you're not, you're not as quote unquote pretty as oh, I have seen women that people would consider a model of beauty. And as soon as they open their mouth, it is disgusting. <laughs> My wife's gonna kill me for saying this. We we're flying to Dallas or something. These two young professional women were sitting in front of us. You know, hair flippers. <laughs> 20 some year old professionals probably first time they've ever been on an airplane in their life but they're professionals and they're talking loud ladies please use a little discretion right you go out here at lunchtime hey give me a call that's probably not the way a lady should be alright and they're talking loud flipping their hair and every now and then a straight of long and go over the seat flipping their hair. Well, I'm just telling you what we're going to do. We're going to let them know we're professionals and they're talking loud and carrying on. They're doing like there's nobody else on the planet. And then every now and then they have to get up and get something out of the, the overhead. And the girl was wearing a short shirt. I always sit on the aisle. And I turn around and there's a belly button right there. I go, oh, brother. <laughs> she gets something out to sit down. You know, it's starting to take my off. 
is a very sweet lady. We get ready to land, <laughs> and the steward says, put your seat back in the upright position, trays, and then the, the lady in front of her, professional flipper baby, <laughs> didn't put her seat up. My wife goes, boom, push the seat, put your seat up. <laughs> and they looked at each other like, are you going to hit him, babe? I mean, <laughs> you're going to drag him out of the house, beat him up right here in front of everybody. <laughs> and they put their seat up. Well, that was pretty much it. You, you, you get your image from who? A beautiful woman who has no discretion about her, herself, who she is, what God made her to be and to do. It's like a pig with a jewel of gold and a snap. It's a waste. It's shame. You'll spend your whole life under the crush of the fact that your ears are not this, your nose is not this, your eyes are too close together. Hey, if you got two of them in the front of your face, go with it, okay? And it's all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm then I got a weird feet. <laughs> discretion about herself, discretion about her appearance. You know, the Bible talks about the external person and the internal person. Question. What's more important, external and internal? Nope. Both. Because the Bible mentions both. We got this idea that somehow or other, like Brother Grace said the other night, as long as my heart's right, and I was like, no, no, that's not it. Because the, the inside and the outside, they go together. Oh, by the way, by the way, you know the Bible tells us that you're not your own, you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your what? In your what? In your body. He preached on it last night. You're supposed to present your what to God? Why does the Bible talk so much about the external thing? Yeah, but doesn't the Bible say, man, look at them, the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. See, that's all that matters is the heart. No, it means this. All I can tell is what I see. That's all I know. Hey, come on. We have this session over here. You're waiting for me to come. The door opens. I walk in in a miniskirt. Very appropriate blouse. <laughs> High heels. And hey, and I got cute legs too, bro. <laughs> and I come walking in here to miniskirt. You girls would look at me and go, look at Brother Johnson. He changed for the ladies' session. You can't tell me you would look at me and say, hmm, something happened between him preaching in there and him coming in this room. What's he doing wearing a dress? A million American males wear a dress every day. The gender blending thing has been going on in America since World War II. Now it's past women looking like men and men looking like women. Now it's men being women and women being men. You understand, ladies, look at me. You understand this thing about appearance is not the sole determining factor about whether or not you're a good person or a good Christian. You do know that, right? Don't you know, don't you know girls and young ladies who are just as godly on the outside as they can be and just as rotten as they can be on the inside? Oh, well, yeah. So, yeah, see, that's what that means. No, that means that person's still messed up. But ladies, look at me. Your appearance, how you look to each other in this world, makes a difference because God determined, this is deep now, God determined that women should look like women and men should look like men. And discretion about your appearance, ladies, simply means that you, as a godly Christian young lady, should have an understanding of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. That you are to adorn yourself in modest apparel. Now that we think, well, okay, modest means you got to wear the Baptist worker thing and all that kind of stuff. No, modest in the Bible means arranged according to your godly lifestyle. Modest. Doesn't say what, what, what is modest. It just says arranged according to a godly lifestyle. But the word apparel is the word kanastole, which is a long or let down dress. And a woman is to adorn herself in a godly arranged, let down dress. A dress that's of a modest appearance of a godly young lady. Say, well, we're going to go to Knott's Berry Farm. I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to do some of those things over there at Knott's Berry Farm wearing a dress. Okay, then you do one of two things. You either adjust it to do what you do or you change what you're wearing to go over there to do what you do, or you decide, if I can't do what I do, we'll dress the way I'm supposed to dress, then I don't do that. What is this thing about appearance? 
Oh, oh by the way, in case, in case you're saying, well, it's not that big a deal. Okay, good, then dress the way we tell you. Because if it's not that big a deal, then just dress the way we tell you. But not me. Go with the Bible. Deuteronomy 22, 5 says, a man is not supposed to wear a woman's garment. So I can't come out of there in a mini skirt because that's a woman's garment. How come the bathroom doors got better sense than we do? Well, until Target. The bathroom door. How is that? If I wear a dress, you say that's not right, that's a woman's garment. Hmm. So then why is it pants on a woman is not a man's garment? It's the same thing. I don't care what you're wearing. Don't, don't, don't be upset by that. Just look at me for a moment. This thing about appearance, ladies, how you look. But not only that, but the modesty of the garments. Why do they, it, it always changes. It either has to go down on the top and up on the bottom or down on top of the bottom. Or it's so skin tight you look like you caught a rhino in a gunny sack. You know, the idea is, excuse me, it could be long enough and modest enough, but it's form-fitting in such a manner that there's too much moving around down there. This is not good. I wish I could get, look, ladies, look at me. I wish I could get you to be a man for just a couple of days and understand how some men, not all, how some men, look at women. I'll tell you how you do it. Go to one of your malls on a warm, sunny day, which you don't have down here. Like 85, and you people walk around with your tongue hanging out because you think you're dying. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but go on a warm, sunny day to one of the malls. Don't look at the people walking around. Look at the people looking at the people walking around. You want some guy older than you like that? Like you're a piece of meat in a market somewhere? Excuse me. Seriously? Because, see, you've been told, well, if you don't do that, you won't attract a guy. Well, you'll attract a guy, you'll just attract the wrong one. We're over in Belarus. It's near Russia. We're over in Belarus. And uh, on a mission trip, my wife was with us. Some big missions and everyone we're at over there. One thing that surprised me, shocked me, was how the young women dressed over there. Very modestly. Now, I'm from California. Born and raised in California. I thought I'd seen everything, quite frankly. But it was, it was... It was almost embarrassing in a sense how immodestly they dressed. One of the young ladies that was one of our interpreters was a Christian young lady dressed very modestly. And I asked her on a bus, we're going somewhere one day. I said, Kiro, can I ask you a question? I said, what, what is up with the young women around here and the clothing? They all, they're, they're seriously, they look like hookers. Everywhere you're a professional place, you go into business, and you, you know, she'd be sitting there and you're going to do something, you say, hi, how are you doing? I mean, it was bad. And here's what she said. She said, well, they understand here that, first of all, most men have drink themselves to death by the time they're 50. So if you're going to get a man, you've got to attract one fast. So they've been told the way to do that is to dress like that so you attract a man. The world's still telling people that. Still telling young ladies this. You've got to dress like this to get a man. You've got to dress like this to be attractive. You've got to dress like this to draw their attention. You've got to dress like this to get a guy. Now, there are a bunch of guys who will get interested in that, but that's not the guys you want. Because they're just meat market guys. They're just scoping women. That's all they're doing. Oh, great. So I just got to like, wear, wear a burqa, huh? Just walk around in a burqa. No, the Bible says you can use the fashion of this world, but not abuse it. It's nothing wrong with being appropriate and fashionable. What's wrong is when the world tells you how far you go, what you do, how you dress. You cannot use the world as your discretion for how you appear when you go out in public and what you do. Because you know why, young lady? Because then you're, you're like a pig with a jewel of gold and you snap. Yeah, but then you, you stand out wherever you go. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's that way for everybody. Men and women. But then you do want to be what God wants you to be, correct? Discretion also about her relationships. Discretion about a relationship. You cannot be right in this world until you're right with your parents. You can't be. Huh. No. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You know, Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and your mother. Why? That it may be well with thee. And that thou mayest live long on this earth. God's requirement for you to be right with your parents is for your benefit, not theirs. By the way, as a parent, I just like to say it doesn't make it easier on your parents. <laughs> but it's more for you that it be well with you, that everything will be okay in here. I talk about my dad in that situation. I'm 62 years old. I don't need a dad anymore. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. 
I don't need a dad anymore in my life, but I do need to be right with my dad. It's very important. Because it is well with me. It is well with my soul. Hey, it is well with my soul. It's for your benefit. And there's actually longevity attached to being right with your parents. Some of you don't even know who your dad is. Some of you don't have a mother in your life. So how do I be right with them? You honor them. To honor them means to treat them worthy of the respect that they deserve. Well, they don't deserve respect. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. And yes, they do. They could have cut your life off in the womb and you'd never come into this world. They're worthy of something. The point isn't so much you have to honor everything that they've done in their life. You have to honor them for the right that they've done. So my mother raised me in a drunkard's home. She should have took us out of that home and left that guy. Took us away from all that. She didn't. She made mistakes. Okay? I've done that as a parent. Join the club. Someday you'll get married. You're going to be a perfect parent, right? No. you got to be right with your family. And it's more than just your mom and your dad. You've got to be right with your brothers and your sisters. If it's World War II in your house all the time, please learn to be a peacemaker. You fight about everything. You got on my shoes again. You went in my room. You got my stuff. Now, you ought to have your own place and all that kind of stuff? Well, fine and good. But tell me that everything's an argument. It's an argument over who got the last bowl of stinking cereal. You're fighting over cereal, people. Think about it. It's like getting on an airline and fighting over the peanuts. Are you kidding me, man? Whatever the case may be, you, you can't get along with your brothers and your sisters. You argue and fight all the time. Do you understand how that makes you a, a pig with a jewel of gold in your nose? Because you got no discretion about your family. If they don't get along, that's their business. You be the peacemaker. Discretion about relationships, like your friends. How do you treat your friends? Now, maybe this is an incorrect statement for a man to make about women. You women are hard on your friends. Woo. I'm talking vicious stuff now. One thing about guys, we settle up. We just settle up. We'll get out behind the building and hook it, and we'll just settle up. And after that, by the way, most guys will still be friends. Yeah, knock one of your teeth out, black one of your eyes, got down on the ground, fought like a bunch of punks, and got up and got, you know what you do? You probably still go play basketball. You'll be all right. Some of you ladies, whoo, boy, you talk about vicious stuff, whoa, scary, so you scare me. <laughs> How you treat your friends, you torture, some of you, you torture your friends. That's how you keep them close to you. You know, you do the old dog thing, you put them on a leash and beat them to get them to keep coming back. You treat them wrong. What, what kind of friendship stuff is that? Some of you got shallow friendships. They're your friend this week, you hate them next week. Is that a friend? You know the Bible says, thy own friend, thy father's friend, forsake not. Did you know if you ever have a real friend, they ought to have them for life? If they go sideways with God, they're still your friend. You're just not close to them anymore because of their spiritual life. But they're still your friend. You're not going to assassinate them. How you treat your friends? Excuse me. Some discretion about real good biblical friendship. And treating them properly. Not creating neurotic little friends, little posses you got to have follow you around and how you treat them. To me, the second most valuable relationship on this earth is friendship. Family is number one. That starts with your spouse when you get married and your family, of course, before then. But then after that, it's friends. Do you know something, ladies? You're only going to have one or two real friends in life. A lot of people that we know. That's another gripe I have about social media. I got 52 friends on my Facebook page. Nah, no, you don't. You got 52 losers following you. I said losers following you. I don't care where you got your hamburger. You understand that? <laughs> I don't care if you found that lipstick at Walmart. I don't care. And that's a girl. If a guy, I don't have nothing to do with that dude. But the truth of the matter is, I don't care. Look at me. I don't care. That you're going to ride the Tower of Terror and scream until you lose bodily function? I don't care. I, I don't care. I don't care that you went to the mall and stood around for two hours and did nothing. I don't care. You don't have 52 friends. You don't. You have 52 losers who follow you. Or unless you're really creepy, you've got followers on Twitter. Now they're, they're going to combine YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Put them all together in one site. It's called UTwitFace. You know the <laughs> I have some friends in my life, and, and this is going to 
sound weird to you. My wife is not one of my friends. She's my wife. That's a special category nobody else has. Nobody. Friends is a different category to me altogether. I have a couple of friends. If I pick up this phone right here and call them. Two of them are up in Northern California right now. I called them and said, I got to have you come down here this afternoon. I've got to see you today. I'm in serious need of you today. They would drop whatever they were doing and they'd be here by this afternoon. And they wouldn't even ask why. They would just come. And you know what? I do that for them too. You got, you got a friend? Huh? Or what you done for me lately? My friend is always there for me. Me? Oh, it's about you. And the last one is because you have to use an F to fill out the outline here. Family, friends, fellas. Yeah, guys. I, I really hope you get this concept that teenage girls have no business dating anybody. You just don't. Seriously. You get to college, you can start getting interested. All this other stuff. <clears throat> Great. You laid it out so well the other night. You start out 13 in love. You're in trouble. Come on, you know it's true. You've seen it. In six months, you're going to hate the punk anyway. Because he's a knucklehead. You're going to see him talking to some other girl and go, he's not a poor man. I don't want nothing to do with that guy. And all of a sudden, this dude you love, we're about to run off and marry somewhere in Tijuana. He has nothing to do with this guy. <laughs> you know, it's fascinating to me. Come on, David, stay. We want you to be interested in guys. Please be interested in guys. Don't be girl crazy. She, she know what's wrong with it. Boy crazy. Not girl crazy. We don't do that. <laughs> but you know, if you're boy crazy, you know what that means if you take boy out, don't you? You're just crazy. <laughs> You're just crazy. You're going around this conference talking to these guys. Oh, do you see that guy? He talked to me. Oh, I, I think he did. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was just trying to find the bathroom. I mean, <laughs> he was trying to find where the room was with all the snacks. Where's the room with the snacks? I think he left. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Come on. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. No, you just talk about boys. Boy, this boy, that boy, this stuff. Did you see that guy? You see this guy? Would you? I like his hair. I like his hair. I like his hair. And back and forth. Oh. Ladies, 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 ladies. Just relax. Be interested in guys. Notice them particularly. But by and large, you're pretty much going to keep them about this far away from you. And just kind of get on with your life and do what you need to do. It'll be okay. Well, I don't know if anyone, a guy will ever love me. You're 14. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And if you're 17, don't worry about it. And if you're 18, don't worry about it. One of our men, a single guy, went out to Bible college, and I said, now look, he's in his middle 20s at that time, late 20s. I said, look, you go to Bible college, don't date anybody your first semester, and no senior girls. He said, why, Pastor Johnson? They said, because it's called the senior rush. It's their last year of Bible college, and they haven't found a guy yet. They're going to they're gonna get some fool freshman and marry him and mess everything up. I said, no senior girls and no dating your first year. Just go to college and get the hang of this thing. He was married at Christmas. Started in September, married at Christmas to a senior girl. Uh -huh. So was a fair woman who was without discretion. Ladies, excuse me. There is something about God has the right person for you. You've heard that statement before. Uh, Remember, Adam, he, God takes a rib from Adam, makes a woman thereof, and brought, listen, listen, brought her unto him. Somewhere in this thing, there's this thing about God and him having that person, just like he has a plan for your life, he has that person picked out for you. You want that one now. You want to hurry up and get the wrong one. You want to wait and get the right one. But he has that person, he will bring that right person to you. Now, I'm not saying he'll wrap him up in a bowl and drop him on your front porch. What I am saying is if you're in the right place doing the right thing, God will bring the right person to you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go out and make something. i got to make it happen. No, you don't have to make it happen. God will bring the right person to you. Now, I'll say this because I'm the only guy in the room. Women are smarter than men. That's why most women will marry a guy at two or three or four years older than them. Because they're more mature than the guy is. And they're smarter. See, you think, because if God wants you to be a mom and a wife and a mother and a guy in the household, 
that you're subjugate, subjugated to house cleaning and the, and the, and the uh, menial tasks of life. That's the backbone of society. Put the smartest people in charge of that. Figure it out. I can't run a household. Are you kidding me? No way. <laughs> I get the grandkids and the women go somewhere. I'm, I'm telling you. We're eating candy bars for breakfast and brushing their teeth with oatmeal. I mean, it's unbelievable. They wear the same clothes. I just figured, Grand Frank, yeah, go whatever, man. Go do that. You got to play with that Yeah, whatever. Don't cut your sister. You know, it's just, just go do what you're doing. No, I can't do that. It's not because it's beneath me. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's God. When I say God has made you a certain way, he's made you with the intelligence to handle great responsibilities, ladies. Figure it out. Don't let the world tell you who you are and what you are. Let God show that to you and trust that God knows what He's doing because He does. As a Jew of gold and swine snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. How pretty was Mary? Don't know. What did Martha look like? The servant. Mary and Mary. That Mary and Martha combo. What did that Mary look like? What did that Martha look like? Eunice and the, and the Timothy's mom, grandma. What did they look like? I don't know. Their women had discretion and influenced great things in the history of mankind. Don't you sell yourself short. Heavenly Father.